Today we are talking about Express LRS and specifically two new receivers from RadioMaster, the RP1 that I've got here and the RP2. Now, since they've been releasing their radios with Express LRS built in, RadioMaster have been making Express LRS receivers. They had their own version of the EP1 and the EP2. However, they've now designed their own updated version, which is called the RP series, which has an improved PCB and some other tweaks as well. What we're going to do today is take a closer look at these receivers. I'll give you a quick overview of both of them. And then at the end, I'm going to share with you my thoughts. Now, just to be clear up front, RadioMaster did send me these receivers for free, as well as actually the TX12 Mark II. However, they have not seen this video before it's been published. They've had no influence in this content. And as always, my thoughts are entirely my own. Anyway, let's get on with it and let's take a closer look at what these receivers are all about. Okay, so as you can see in front of me, we have three receivers here. We have their original EP2. We then have their new RP2 series, which is this one here, and the RP1. Now, the big difference between the RP1 and 2 is this is their new receivers from RadioMaster, which they say has a better quality PCB that helps dissipate heat. It has castellated pads as well as larger pads for soldering and overall the build quality on these new receivers is much much higher than what we had on the previous ones. Now these both come in the same variants that we saw in the past which is the RP1 and the RP2, one with the built-in antenna and one without so you can still choose what one best suits your needs. What we'll do next is get them unpackaged and take a closer look at them on the bench and then we'll get them under the microscope. Okay, so we've got them all unwrapped and what we have is the RP1 on the right hand side, the RP2 and then the older EP2 style receiver on the left. Now that EP2 was based off a similar design that we've seen from Happy Model. However, these new RP receivers are a completely new design from RadioMaster. They have those much larger pads, as you can see, which are also castellated. We also have that new PCB layout, which RadioMaster say helps dissipate heat. And depending on what version you choose you either have that model with the built-in antenna or this one here which is the RP1 with this external antenna which Radio Master say that they've upgraded as well. It's a nice solid plastic design there in the middle and it's much better than what we had on the earlier receivers. Now the real big benefit to these new receivers is the fact that they are a much better design but that does come at some cost of size. You can see that they are larger overall. Radio Master are saying that they are 13 mil by 11 mil by 7 mil for the model with the built-in antenna and weight wise what you're getting is about half a gram for the RP2 with that built-in tower antenna and about 2.2 grams for the RP1 with that external antenna. Overall, all three support the same features from Express LRS. They're all 2.4 gigs. They all support 500 Hz or F1000, and they all support CRFS with regards to input. Really, the big difference here is that we have an all new design from RadioMaster that has improved upon what we've had in the past. So, jumping over to the microscope and taking a look at the RP1 first of all. So, you can see we have this new PCB layout. We have our SX1281 chipset. We have our new large pads. We have our voltage regulator, our filter coming out the SX chipset into our UFL antenna connector. Then up here, you have on the chopped corner the little LED for status. And we have a boot pad down here, as well as our 25 megs crystal oscillator there. Looking overall at the components, everything looks nice and tidy. There's no sign of tombstoning. Looking at how everything is, there looks to be plenty of solder too, although we'll hop in a little bit closer in a minute and see how it looks under the scope at higher magnification. Flipping it over to the other side of the board, you can see we're using an ESP8285 as we would expect. You can then see again the back side of the pads nicely labelled up. We then got the rest of the components and then up here you can see the little Wi-Fi antenna for the firmware update function there as well. Now initially overall everything looks very good from a build quality point of view. What I think we'll do is go in a bit closer and just check how everything looks at a higher magnification. Moving around now we're in closer you can see all of the components soldered looks absolutely perfect. 
Everything is nice and straight on its pads. There also looks to be plenty of solder around the QFN2, a lot more than I've seen from some other manufacturers. Let's just flip it over to the other side. Again, all of the components nice and straight, no sign of anything off kilt or any tombstoning where it flips up. Soldering on the filter looks good. Soldering on the UFL, again, looks to be plenty there. And everything just looks very decent indeed. Let's just flip up the QFNs and just adjust the focus so we can see how that looks. Okay, so looking in closer, I have to say everything looks very, very good. There is actually quite a lot of solder on the pads to the QFN package, a lot more than I've seen from some of the other manufacturers, such as the EP1 and 2 from Happy Model. Everything there looks very, very good. Let's hop over to the EP2 and take a look at what that one is like. What we'll do first of all, before I adjust the focus, we'll just take a look at the QFNs first. Yeah. That all looks good. Plenty of solder around them. Flip over to the ESP chipset. Again, a bit of residue, a bit of flux, but no sign of solder balls. And again, plenty of solder, which means you're going to get a good connection. Okay, let's lay it flat. Again, this PCB design on the RP2 is very, very similar. Everything is pretty much the same. The only difference really is that we have that tower style antenna there rather than the UFL connection for attaching your own. The soldering all looks good on that. Looks like there's just a little bit of something there. Not sure what that is. Let's just give that a bit of a pull. Actually, it's a he. It's not a wire, it's a he. So that all looks fine. Let's flip him over the other side. Just refocus because it sticks up a bit higher, this board. Here we go. Again, all of the soldering on the components looks nice and straight, nice and tidy. Everything looks exactly as you would expect it to be. I have to say at this point, I think these are some of the highest quality Express LRS receivers I've seen. The overall build is absolutely better than what I've seen personally from the likes of Happy Model. So to share with you my thoughts on the RP1 and 2. Now these receivers are clearly based off that EP design. Radio Master did do their own version of the EP earlier in the year. However, we now have this customized RP series. I genuinely think these are some of the highest quality Express RS receivers I have seen from any manufacturer. The PCB quality is high. It's nice to see castellated pads, large pads as well. We have very high quality soldering, the manufacturing looks decent, and everything about them just feels a little bit better in my experience that I've seen from most of the others. They are, in my opinion, certainly better than the EP series from the likes of Happy Model. Whilst I have not had major problems with those receivers. I have had quality issues that I shared with you on this channel, but I do know that hasn't happened to everyone else. But when I started looking closely at the receivers, there was clear signs of problems around the corner for me, such as some of the QFNs not soldered particularly well, some of the components not straight, tombstoning, etc. So again, Whilst the EP series may function very well at times, the quality of the build certainly isn't there. And what Radio Master are doing really well here is that build quality. And I think that is going to be worth it. However, you are paying for that build quality. And these receivers are more expensive than the Happy Models. They are coming in at about $19. So whilst you're getting a much better receiver, you are paying for that. And that's something you need to weigh up in your decision making. Overall, I do think Radio Master are smashing it out the park right now with regards to their Express RS systems. They have these nice high quality receivers, they have their new radios such as the TX12 Mark II, the TX16 Mark II and the Zorro which are all well highly regarded within the Express LRS community and actually Radio Master are starting to become the higher quality manufacturer in that side of things but also not 
too premium a price as well. Yes, the receivers are more expensive, but we're still below $20. The radios are certainly not in the top end of the price band. So if you're looking to get into Express LRS with a higher quality system, the Radio Master ones are going to be worth a look. Now, as I've mentioned, if you're interested in getting yourself some of these, they are available from Radio Master's website, about $19. Or if you're interested in getting anything else, there is an affiliate link to Radio Master in the description. Just to be clear, if you use that link, I will receive a commission. Radio Master is the only company I use affiliate links with right now. And the reason for that is I feel the quality of their product is that good I'm happy to use an affiliate link. But I do want to make sure you always fully understand that my thoughts are entirely my own as always. I will always tell you what I think, even if there is an affiliate link there. But if there is one, I'm going to be clear what benefit I get from it. Overall, I think Radio Master is smashing it out the park and it's nice to see some of the hardware quality on Express LRS continue to improve. And I think if you're looking for some of the best ones, it's worth a look. Now, that's it from me on this one. If you're interested in finding out more, please do make sure you are a subscriber of the channel. If you'd like to support us to keep making independent content like we do in many of our other videos, please do check out the link to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee. I want to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreons. I would not be able to keep making content on this channel without your support. There is also a link to my Discord server there in the description of the video as well. If you want to find out more about this, please do check it out or please do put your comments in the comment section of this video. I will try and answer any questions here as well and tell me what you think about these receivers too. Anyway, that's it from me on this one. Stay safe. I'll speak to you soon.